My name is John Arthur Stokes. Uh, I was born and read in Prince Edward County, Farmville, Virginia. I became a part of this Brown versus Board of Education when, when I was in high school. Uh, our case is the only case that was student-led, and um, I'm one of those students who helped to lead uh, a walkout at uh, Robert Russo Moden High School and, uh, on the 23rd of April, 1951. We knew we were being programmed for failure. We had inadequate facilities, not only as far as uh, buses were concerned, but also as far as uh, the schools were concerned. We had brick buildings um, for white kids, but for colored children, there were 13 to 15 uh, wooden buildings, and um, they were inadequately ventilated, and the students, uh, my brother was the principal of one of those schools, they had a hard time getting the superintendent to supply them with wood. Uh, to keep the students warm. Our books were always hand-me-down. I attended uh, the elementary school, and the reason I did not start on schedule, I didn't start the school until I was nine, because of the fact that we did not have transportation for colored children. And uh, it was at that time that I started realizing that, hey, this is, this is not right. We had gone to other counties, we had seen how they operated, and we knew that all counties were, did not treat colored people the same way. So when Robert Johns came to us, um, talking to us in October about striking uh, my twin sister and me, uh, we thought about it. I, I knew that I could not go on strike with anyone who did not have the backbone to do so and to withstand the torture, the trials, and tribulation that the power structure was going to put upon us. My twin sister, Barbara and um, Catherine Cole, drafted a letter to the, super, to the, to the NAACP and, um, in Richmond, and um, they responded to us within a few days. And they came to meet with us. And um, the lawyers were very hesitant at first, and they wondered how in the world did these colored children write in racial territory, you know, could become such a force and pull this thing off. So they told us they couldn't take our case initially. They came through and met with us again and sent Mr. Banks, who was the executive director of the NAACP. And um, he said, we'll take your case only, only if you will do this for non-integration. They did not use the word segregation, non-integration. That, that's what they said. That was, the, that was the wording they used. Once that concept came out that the 1954 Supreme Court decision was going to fly and was going to become law, a lot of people went into action. They closed off schools in Prince Edward County from 59 through 64. And during that time, students had to find other means of education. Their parents sent them all over the United States, all over the United States, to get an education. Once this particular situation was over and I moved out, we could not talk about it for years because we had targets on our backs and because people were still angry about what we did. But I have no regrets. And as I look back, uh, we changed history.